Hey guys, what is up? I'm swimming. These are my top five new player tips for Underlords. Let's get into it. So the first three tips are going to cover what you want to do at each different stage of the game. So tip number one is the early game. These are the first 10 rounds of the game before rounds 10 creep wave. And this is the point of the game where you should basically be deciding what you want to do for the rest of the game. What kind of build path you want to start assembling. So during this phase, you're going to be assembling pairs. You're trying to collect as many pairs as you can and work towards, you know, builds and alliances that you feel comfortable with or that you feel are strong in general. When you complete the pairs into sets, like a three of a kind that will upgrade the hero to a two star, at that point you're thinking, okay, this build is something I might start building around. Now, in the back half of the first 10 levels, you might start playing for a little bit of interest as well. Interest is an incredibly important mechanic and is the entire theme of the mid game, which is rounds 11 through 20. During this phase, you should basically ensure that you just don't do a lot. A lot of players make the mistake of spending their gold at that phase. This would be like the number one improvement for new players is to just during rounds 11 through 20, you're pretty much not going to want to do almost anything. You can upgrade your board a little bit on the natural packs you see, but this is the round where you should probably already know what kind of path forward you want to take. Um, it might change a little bit depending on the items that you find from the round 10 and round 15 creep waves, but for the most part, you know what you're doing at this point, and you should just be riding those interest points. So how interest works in Underlords is at the start of every round, you gain 10, you gain one tenth of the gold that you have saved up going into the last round. So for example, if I have 50 gold at the start of uh, a fight, after that fight, I will gain five gold interest. This caps at exactly 50 for five. So having more than 50 gold is a little bit unnecessary, but you wanna be hitting that 50 gold mark as soon as possible. Typically around like rounds 16 through 18 is when you should be hitting this 50 gold mark. Uh, and this is going to be the gold that you can start to spend a little bit on leveling and on rolling for what you want to try to complete your build. During the mid game, make sure to think about how you can hit each individual interest point. So if, for example, you have some stuff on your bench you're not using, aggressively try to sell things that you know you're not going to need later or you know you can find again later and it's no problem to hit interest points. Then we get into the late game. Late game is round 21 plus, And this is a very, very difficult spot to play for new players. So what you're gonna wanna do is very important. You really wanna be level eight on round 21, almost always, uh, almost exactly on round 21 too. And there's a specific reason for this, which is this is the timing that most builds are coming online. Uh, a lot of the losing streak players at this point will be like almost knocked out of the game and they're going to want to start amping up their strategy and game plan and the other players have to respond in turn. So this is where you should go to level eight and start rolling down to protect your life if your life is getting low as a resource. Now, don't be a little too overprotected of your health if you have a lot of health remaining, if you're at like 30, 40 or higher health, it's okay to not just like dump all your gold all in. Uh, and I would highly recommend playing a little bit greedy. You're going to lose a couple of games sometimes to greed, but it's a good strategy and mentality to have going forward as a player, especially when you can get familiar with how strong your board is. I'll often still be saving 50 gold even when I'm at like 20 health. If I know my board is stronger than other people's and I know I want to just keep staying in the economy game until the late game because Underlords is all about having a bigger bank than the other guy. All right, so tip number four, this is one a lot of new players have trouble with, which is when to level up. I would recommend in general leveling up either twice by level nine or not at all because you either want to be fighting for the board or you're okay lose streaking because you do gain extra gold. Every time you lose in succession, you'll see it uh, denoted by this little wispy gray outline when you're on a lose streak. Don't be afraid of lose streaks because they are a great way to get gold early, which is going to compound into your interest points and help you achieve 50 gold faster. The fastest you get 15, 50 gold up, the better your economy game is going to be. So if you are lose streaking, I wouldn't really even bother leveling at either of these levels. That being said, if you have a good board and you want to fight for it, leveling at level five on round five, and then again to level six on round nine is a pretty good way to start out your game. 
often you're going to want to be level 7 by round 17. Uh, it's just good timing for this. Sometimes you can make it a little bit earlier, sometimes on 16, if you have a great economy game going on, or uh, you're just, you know, feeling a little bit like you need to stabilize. And on round 21, as mentioned before, you need to be level 8. So the question is, when do you go to 9? Well, often I find that new players make the mistake of going to 9 a little bit too early. Typically, you really just want to make sure your board is super online on level 8. This is going to mean rolling down to upgrade your units. You want your board to be strong, stable, and you want a lot of 2-star units, often, unless you just are not too close to completing anything, right? So often, I'll be leveling to 9 at soonest on something like 26. Often, it'll be like late 20s or even like 31 when I go to level 9, and I fairly rarely even bother going to level 10. And then my final tip for new Underlords players is understanding what role each alliance serves in this game, right? There are uh, an idea of main builds and support alliances, and I think a lot of people confuse them. So for main builds, you have warriors, mages, assassins, hunters, and to a lesser degree, stuff like Scrappy or like Knights Trolls when in conjunction, uh, whereas support builds are going to be stuff like Heartless, Savage, Warlock, Primordial, Druid, Human, and Scaled. You're not really supposed to build around these. So something like a six Savage build or a six Warlock build or a four Primordial build is often not really a great idea. These alliances are just meant to more so support the main alliances. And in general, you really want to combine an offensive main alliance with a defensive support alliance and vice versa. So because of that, uh, let's say you have a warrior build, you will often be combining warriors with something like Heartless pairing Pudge and either Necrophos or Drow and something like Savage pairing Lycan with something like Tusk, right? Heartless and Savage help increase your damage output a little bit, while Warriors are there to bulk up. Whereas on the contrary, let's say you have an offensive uh, main build like Assassins, you're running six Assassins, I'd highly recommend pairing that with something like two Druids or perhaps a Naga uh, to pair with your Slark in the form of Medusa or even something like Primordial or Warrior. As you can see, all of these are defensive ones. So just try to understand the idea that not all alliances are meant to be uh, built into in a big way. You should just keep the supports the supports and try to combine offensive with defensive when you're combining main with support. And that's it. Those are my top five basic tips for Underlords players. There's going to be some more advanced or intermediate tips coming soon as well. And if you want to take a look at any of my other guides or my own YouTube channel, you can take a look in the description where you'll be able to find all of what you're looking for. And until then, I'll see you next time, guys. Okay, Ogre, one punch. Oh, go. Okay, DPS chart time. Now is the time. Let's go, Ogre. Holy shit. Okay, 8,000, literally one-shotting everything. And the thing is, like, imagine if we're actually playing to protect our units better. This Ogre just doesn't have the chance to shine in the way that he needs to, truly. <laughs> we, we have three Vanguards literally benched, dude. These Vanguards are quite literally getting fat-kitted. This is like when I was in a soccer team on school. Like, literally, they're not even in. Like, they're not even in. Okay. Oh, Warlocks are down. Frontline is down. Ogre comes in. He's one punching. He's using his bloodlust on another unit for some reason. Oh, he can't. Can he not target himself now that he has BKB? Oh, shit. Oh, he's literally the size of my screen. Oh, shit. Hey. He's literally the size of my screen. Here he goes. One punch. Okay, that is a 13k DPS literal screen size logo. I wonder if I if I model probabilistically the odds, just based on this sample size, that we're even able to get a third ogre, it's probably less than one percent, right? No, it's not less than one percent. No, it would be it'd probably be closer to like four or five percent. Okay, how was that? Ah, just a meager five k DPS. That's nothing. That's nothing. Okay. Is this actually good? Wait a second. The thing is, I can't run Enigma, because when you really think about it, it's the acid spray that allows this ogre to unleash his true potential on the world. Like, why even buy this unit? I'm not even leveling up. I'm just like, I'm benching my ogre and I'm just rolling. We've already won this game. Now it's just time to conduct science. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
Mm, nope. Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like we're getting nowhere. God, but just imagine how much stronger this would be if we got one more upgrade. How many warlocks have we declined now? We've declined an ass load of warlocks. We've declined like six warlocks, I think, right? But, like, imagine. I'm serious. Imagine if the game worked like an auto chest and allowed you to buy more if they were benched. I'm no, no, no. Actually, imagine that. We would have a three star warlock. We would have a three star ogre. We would have like seven other warlocks. We'd have like seven other ogres. Our entire board would be warlocks and ogre with big, big daddy and big mommy leading the family, right? It would literally just be like an, enti an entire tribe of bloodbounds. I want shit, dude. Damn it. I wanted to play more. God damn it.